Well, hello, everyone. I'm Jessica, and this is Andrew. Today, in this video, we are going to do a typical interview about pets and animals. So take your time, sit back, and enjoy the video. If you guys want something more challenging, you can list off all of the questions that is in the video. So you can use it for your own video to show your opinion. It's not compatible. It's up to you. Okay, so let's begin. Well, hello. So the first question is, what is one of your favorite animals? Why do you like it? I like cats. Cats are good pets. Yeah, if like you're out all day, they can take care of themselves. So long as you got like a nice sunny spot and something for them to scratch up. Yeah, cats are cool. Do you have a cats as a pet? I don't have any pets. Um, back in the States, um, my family has two cats. If you turn into an animal, which animal would you be? Being a human is a really good deal. I like, I feel like being a dog would not be that bad. Assuming that you were born in like Finland or something. You know, different cultures respect or, or treat animals very, very differently. <laughs> if there's any ounce of truth to Buddhism, hopefully I'm, I'm doing things right so I don't have to ever consider that question. Um, so I keep moving up, I keep leveling up with my experience points of reaching towards Nirvana. Uh, anyway, I don't know. What is the difference between a pet and the wild animal? Pets usually are domesticated versus wild animals are wild by, by nature. Literally and figuratively by nature. And hopefully, if you're being a responsible owner, your domesticated pet has received all the various vaccinations, shots, and whatnot to ensure that it's not likely to um, transmit any sort of diseases. Versus wild animals, well, they don't get that medical care. So wild animals tend to be a lot more dangerous for the diseases that they can carry, most notable of which would be rabies. What can children learn by having a pet... Two things come to mind. First off is some degree of responsibility if they are required to take care of the pet to any extent. But likewise, they can learn that from doing household chores, so yeah, they are not they don't require a pet to learn that. Secondarily, consequences for actions. So if a child, say, I don't know, yanks on the tail of the dog and the dog goes around and, you know, retaliates in some way, cause and effect. They realize there are consequences for their actions. But again... There are many ways they can learn this. You pet a cat before, right? And then they're, they're happy and happy and happy for a little bit. And then they started like get this little look in their face. And they're like, oh, I should really stop petting you. But I'm kind of liking it. And then before you know it, the cat turns around, bites you and claws and all that. So I suppose that's where you start to also learn to pay attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, potential painful consequences may be around the corner. Isn't this too much for children? I don't know, some of you people like high school, university age, right? Have you ever been to a zoo? Yes, I've been to a few different zoos. How was it? Bleak, dismal, uh, borderline. I, it's not, not a place I would want to go again. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I've, I've been to happier places. I've certainly been to greener places. Should animals be kept in the zoo? There are pluses and negatives. Um, in zoos, animals can get certain amounts of health care, etc. Um, rehabilitation, things of that sort. As well, endangered species can be kind of guided back from the, the brink of extinction, potentially. Um, but if we're being responsible human beings, we're not putting them in that situation in the first place. So if you do it right, it can be a positive thing. But I think a lot of people don't do it right. Do you think the most important thing by which psychopaths can be recognized is the attitude toward animals? Okay, um, so first that word, psychopath, has two parts. Psycho, which means mind, and path, which refers to pathology or illness of some kind. So it means somebody with any kind of mental illness. Mental illness is a broad spectrum, and some people have mental illness where you Clearly, it makes them very antisocial. But the vast majority of people who have any degree of mental illness are not like that. They exist much more on a, a, a normal spectrum. And you wouldn't know 
that they have any kind of mental illness. Um, so let's just clarify with that. Um, now, that being said, for people who are expected to become or were expected to be exceptionally antisocial, yes, it's seen as an indicator or a predictor. There's a legitimate checklist that we have for people that who are likely to become serial killers. Um, and one of the things on that list is that they derive pleasure from the torture or killing of animals just for the sake of torturing and killing those animals. It doesn't mean like hunting and killing as sports. That's different. It doesn't mean um, killing for, for meat. That's different. It doesn't mean um, killing and torturing as is conducted in Vietnam, like say for dog meat, dogs are tortured before killing so that way they release adrenaline and supposedly makes the meat taste better. Or I've seen people torture and kill, like, mice in their home to make the mouse squeak and squeal and scream in agony and death throes and all that. And I, I was told they do that because the other mice can hear this and realize they don't want to have the same fate for themselves. I don't know if that's correct, but I've seen enough YouTube videos and things like that that I, I, I don't think is just hearsay. Um, so again, those are different from simply torturing and killing animals for the sake of torturing and killing animals in one's own amusement. Do you think it is acceptable to test cosmetics on animals? Testing cosmetics on animals. Uh, I think that if we don't test cosmetics on animals, then they're just going to be tested on the general public. That being said, um, there are a lot of tests that can be done before they are tested on animals to ensure that they will be as safe as feasibly possible on those animals and that animal testing is a fairly archaic way of testing products and as technology develops and advances we're going to find we have ways of testing products that don't require animals and as soon as we can do that the better you know if we can phase past testing on animals then that would be ideal how do you feel about the use of animals for medical research? Yeah, same as testing the cosmetics. It's something that's useful in some extent, to some extent. But again, it's archaic, and as we develop more technology, we can move past it. The one thing that has a bit of an issue is when people start testing, like, dietary components on animals. Like, quite some years ago, there was a test done on using artificial sugars with rats and the use of the artificial sh in sh artificial sugars in rats led to um, cancer in those rats. And then of course the media saw this and they took it and they blew it all out of proportion saying these artificial sugars instantaneously cause cancer and blah 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 which is nonsense because the volume of that artificial sugar that they were using on a rat you would have to drink like 400 cans of diet coke each day to obtain, to, to take in the same volume of the artificial sugars. So it does serve some purpose, but too easily what's tested on animals and seen in animals is misextrapolated um, in understanding potential effects on humans. So that has a de definite negative. Some people think that people shouldn't wear animal furs. Do you agree? And why? why not? Two things. First might be that, um, yeah, it's horrific to, to slaughter animals for, or not. actually, the thing is that uh, quite often these furs are not taken from dead animals, right? Literally, they will rip the skin off of a living animal to make that kind of jacket. And it's not, yeah, I, you're shipping like, oh, yeah, exactly. Like if you were to try and take something to peel a potato or peel a carrot and imagine taking that to your, it's the same concept. It's not a happy notion, right? Um, so that's horrific. Opposite end, you're right, this might not be okay for kids. <laughs> the opposite end is that if an animal has died or has been killed for meat or various other components, it makes sense to me to then use every single gram of that animal to the fullest extent to be able to show almost respect for the sacrifice that was made. But again, it's fairly archaic. We're learning to be able to um, develop meat and leathers and artificial manifestations of biological components inside laboratory settings. So at some point, we won't need to bother with it. 
Okay, I think that's all. Thanks again for listening. Don't miss our next episodes. Until next time, keep enjoying English and learning English with Jessica 